game some pit panthers as well so uh, really looking forward to watching the play tonight pit in the wake white wake forest in the black in a critical acc matchup later on in this season last home game of the year in the regular season for the panthers as wake forest presses ahead early it's emily colton the name you'll be hearing a lot tonight the transfer from unc yeah, I think it's certainly a uh, certainly a game for both teams here. What what they can, they both teams really need to win for for the same reason to, to either keep in that sort of top position or get a chance to actually get into the top six as well. So should be an exciting game. I can't see anybody playing for the tie tonight. There's a reason Wake Forest has got that little number two next to their name as well. A historic campaign for their Tony Deleuze's team. Had some really impressive results. I mean, Stanford coming into the conference this year, they get a win on the road there. Talked about the Mississippi State win earlier on in the year. They were in the top 20, but not where they are at this point in the year. Now in the top four, another really impressive win, especially for their RPI as well. Yeah, I mean, they've had a great season. Um, you know, the, the win last week in Dallas against SMU was a great win as well um, to go there, especially after not playing for 16 days as well. Um, so... I, I, Absolutely uh, fantastic results for them this year. Their only loss, on, you know, was at North Carolina, which is no disgrace to be fair. <laughs> so, you know, a great team. Looking forward to them to tonight, and I'm sure they're going to they're going to give Pitt some issues tonight. Here's Fury in the midfield for the Panthers. Not many reinforcements around her. Gets her pocket picked, and Wake Forest takes over again. It's Ansborough on the back end. Yeah, you can see Wake Forest straight from the off, offensively and defensively, trying to play at a tempo, close down quick, and when they've got the ball, then they are moving the ball well. Talked to Coach Ben Waldrum earlier in the week, and he said this is a very similar matchup schematically for both of these teams. They like to do a lot of the same things, and it's it's a, a battle of strengths tonight, it feels. Yeah, they certainly try and play the same way, uh, match, up, match up very well. Um, it, it's going to be a good game, you know, and like we said before in the opening is that you know, both teams coming off different results um, after the weekend. So Pitt here, they're going to want to prove, prove to the fans, to themselves, that, hey, look, you know what? We belong here. Last week was just one of those freak results um, that, that happens every now and again. So, but certainly an entertaining team to watch, full of goals. <laughs> Gagne and Wells going back and forth on the right side, gives off to Abby Oden in the middle. She's got some space to work, tries to give off to Mellonhorse with some room in the box. Mellonhorse just wide, a great chance for Pitt. Flag. Indicates a goal kick, I believe it will be. Pitt wants a corner. We'll see what the decision here is. A little bit of conversation going on between the players and the referees, but another look at that chance for Kira Mellenhorst. Yeah, I think he's going to take a look at this just to Maybe see. The penalty there, yeah. Just to see, he, she may have got the ball first, but I think she also took the leg as well, so it'd be an interesting decision, this one. That angle, too, coming from behind as well. A tough angle to make a tackle from, too. So a critical early decision. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. If you're coming from behind, you always, you always have that risk of conceding the penalty. Looking to see if they got contact with the ball first. She takes a good touch. Uh... I'm not sure. She may have just got the ball first. I'm not sure from that angle. It was Dempsey Brown doing the defending there, the sophomore from Winter Park, Florida. Oh, that's a tight one. What do you got, Danny? Your uh, first prediction of the night. Let's see. I'm not sure. I think he, I, I'm not sure. I think he may give a penalty for this uh, one, but I'm not sure. A great inlet pass as well from Abby Oden to set up the opportunity. She certainly gets some of the ball, but she also gets some of the leg as well, so. As we'll get the decision now. Penalty. I think, I think she just got the ball just, just before. In which case, we can say now a fantastic defensive play from Dempsey Brown, which probably yeah. saved a goal in the first three minutes of the game. Yeah, a good last-minute tackle there. But a good start by Pitt there. That's a great chance in, in the first few minutes of the game. And it will be a corner. Gagne to take. Close side of the box, looking for Mellonhorst again. That one poked away and cleared by Wake Forest.
be quite happy with this. A, a, a good chance there early on. Continuing this extremely impressive campaign. Here's Wells. Looking for Fury Johnson doing the defending that time for the Demon Deacons as the Panthers regain around the midfield. Pitso sort of continuing the MO that they've had all season of getting a lot of opportunities. It's just finishing in the final third that's been the issue so far. Going to want to try and continue that and get those chances converted in the final third. Yeah, I mean, they've certainly had, they're not scared to shoot. They'll shoot from distance, which, which is great to see. You know, if you don't shoot, you don't score. So um, but they've certainly taken their shots on goal and all season and they've scored goals in, in, in every game. So or, or the majority of the games as well. So and they do create a lot of chances. Side on the throw in for Wake Forest going down low, looking for Colton in the corner. Panthers steer that one away. Scythe back in possession. Over to Brown. Yeah, I mean, going back to that, I mean, Pitt, you know, 38 goals all season, an average of 2.38 goals per game. So th there's certainly a lot of goals in there as well. Um, so uh, certainly I think that's something Wake Forest are, are going to be aware of as well. Pitt coming off of that 7-1 loss down in Tallahassee and you look at Pitt's schedule, and they hadn't given up multiple goals in 12 games, and then they get a seven hung on them by, granted, a very good team. But talking to Coach Ben Waldrum during the week, something where he said, this is a real litmus test for this team because this is really a need for three points today. And after coming off of a loss like that, tough to mentally turn the page. And now you got to do it against the number two team in the country. Yeah, it's always tough, you know, I think, but, you know, they're, they're all good players, they're all good athletes, you know, they'll be, I'm sure the coach and staff have spoke to them all week, and, and they're probably going to use that game as a bit of a motivation as well to, to try and get something out of tonight as well. So, but, but it's amazing, though, when you think, you know, they conceded seven there, they'd only conceded ten goals. So, you know, it's, it's crazy, really, when you, when you think about it, so... But I'm sure they're going to use this for motivation. There certainly doesn't look like there's any sign of a, you know, of, of any sort of doubt that they're playing well right now. They're working hard, so. Valentina Amaral in goal for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons tonight. The sophomore from Oviedo, California, had some injury troubles coming into this year in her sophomore campaign, really getting her first full season in. Opportunity as that number one, and she has shined so far this year. 792. She started throughout her career, so redshirted last year after after three games. Um, but she she certainly is a, a fantastic goalkeeper um, and, and somebody who they're they're really she does well with her feet as well in in terms of keeping the ball, and, and she's good with her feet what you want your goalkeeper to do, you know, make, make saves. A little bit of a scramble here in the box now. Pass goes to Gagne looking for room on the outside, but a really nice defensive play there. Yeah, another good last-ditch tackle there, uh, but by Wake Forest. Here come the Demon Deacons now. Hanks on the left side gathering in the corner, one-on-one -on -one with Zalski. trying to get room but a nice play by Abby Oden to counter and that's just what that's just there where Pitt's just got to be a little bit careful there on the counter attack because Wake Forest are really quick and they do get numbers up as well and they get numbers on the far side as well so just something to be aware of for Pitt there as it will roll out of play Shots 1-0 early on in favor of the Panthers on that chance from Mellonhorse that was reviewed for a potential. Offensively so far here, hadn't had a great chance so far yet. Yeah, Pitt have done quite well to, to keep them really eight minutes in, so not a shot on goal yet. So, 
Pitt, Pitt will be happy with that. I think they'd be disappointed. Maybe they should have. Maybe they feel they should have taken the lead there. But it was good last last ditch defending as well. Here's Murphy, two on one. Zalski steers her off the ball and clears. Morris over to Johnson. Small, the crosser looking, or excuse me, the crosser too small from Kaya Hanks. As Wake Forest stays in possession. Randy Waldrum's team trying to gain some momentum in the latter part of the season. Hasn't gotten the same results as they did at this point last year, but still a chance to crack into that ACC tournament top six. Today a win would go a long way towards that as here's a chance in train Three on our left. Abby Oden from way out and that one goes. That's there, that's the, you know, we'll shoot. You know, you give us a chance to shoot, we'll shoot. Um, and she just sliced it a little bit uh, wide there, but good intentions there and, and a good break. From well far out so far this season, has those four goals in the last four games. We talked to Ben Waldrum. Olympics where the schedule was really demanding and just something that these college athletes aren't necessarily accustomed to where they're playing three four games in the course of a little bit more than a week and it's just so many games compressed into a short period of time it was a bit of a turnaround for her to get prepared for this season but she has and CC playing and you, you can see the rewards of it now with you know four goals in the last four games so it's it's certainly worked out for them pass too far for Shapansky and Tony to lose his team he talked about he got the big game coming up against Duke next but he is very focused on this pit game said they are almost the same team from a a personnel standpoint last year, yes, they lost Landy Mertz, Amanda West, but largely at the back and in the midfield, still a very similar team to the one that made the Elite Eight last year. Yeah, he was very complimentary of Pitt, and certainly, you know, he was worried about this game as well coming <laughs> into it. He, he knows coming here onto the turf as well, where, you know, their home field's grass, so it makes, makes a little bit of a difference, and, a, you know, a Thursday night game in Pittsburgh as well, so, and probably still with a, a little bit of last year's result in the mind as well. So, you know, he's, he, he knows this, this is the game, one game at a time, and tomorrow morning they'll start thinking about the Duke game on Sunday. Abby Oden over to Shapansky and off on the back to Lee. And if you play this Wake Forest team, uh, if you want to play them, you want to play them on the road. Not that that's an, uh, a, an easy contest. Yeah, a great little ball through there and good movement as well. It's, it's a good look wow, there. That's a great the pass. Two it was Gagne and the delivery there nearly setting up a fantastic opportunity early on for the Panthers again. I think Pitt will be really happy with this, this start, the first 12 minutes. Couple of looks on goal, uh, you know, one set piece and, and really kept Wake Forest to, to maybe... ...which Pitt have dealt with. Scythe over to Morris as she's tripped up. First foul of the game as Wake Forest will get the free kick. And I think you bring up a good point. Wake Forest is definitely not one of those teams you want to fall behind the eight ball early on against. And it seems like Pitt has showed up today with a really good amount of energy. Something that we talked in the week about, it was not sure how they would rebound after that 7-1 loss. And it seems like they've really turned a new page, at least so far, in today's match. Yeah, I mean, you, you certainly wouldn't think that they've just come off a 7-1 loss. You know, they're, they're out there, they've got lots of energy, they're playing some good soccer, they're defending really well as well. So, like I said, I, I think the staff will be really happy with this, the coaching staff, for the first sort of 12, 13 minutes going into it. Morris looking for Hanks on the left. She found her. 
Wells giving chase. As that one's poked away by Gagne coming back and making a nice defensive play to clear up that opportunity. I think for Wake Forest, I think they've just they've made, you know, two, two or three sort of misplaced passes, which I think will obviously frustrate the coaching staff over there as well. So they're just trying to find their feet into the game. Murphy looking for Colton on the back end, and Breach comes off her line to make the pick up there. Going to a good awareness that the ball is going to come through. She's in a good position off the line. That's, that's good, brave goalkeeping. Nice job by Lee on the backside to have Colton checked there as well. Yeah, good defending there by Olivia Lee as well. Uh, just, just sort of getting the body in between the, the ball and the forward as well. So good defending and good goalkeeping. Fury off to Shapansky. An assist with 15. One of only four players with more than 10 to give you a... Wake Forest will get the free kick after that. That's on Emily Murphy, too, someone who we're not used to seeing that kind of play from necessarily. She is a really good player for Wake Forest. Here's Ansboro. Morris, off to Johnson, back to Morris. Small. I think for Wake Forest, they're just sometimes a little bit untidy in, you know, when they've got the ball. They just need a good spell of possession to come into the game. Wells to Gagne in a swarm of defenders there including Johnson, who pokes that one out of play. Kristen Johnson, a, an interesting player for these Demon Deacons, another one of the returners on this roster, the senior from Reykjavik, Iceland. Appeared in all 18 games last season and has not missed a game in her career at Wake Forest. She's also played a full 94 of the last five games as well. Yeah, I mean, 70 appearances, 63 starts. That, that, that's a really good record. So um, she's an attacking sort of left back as well. So, yeah, a really good pickup for Wake Forest, and she's been a really good player for them. Another foul that time, it looked like Shapansky tripped up by Small on the far end of the field. Both teams kind of taking some time to come into their own so far with just under 30 minutes to play in this first half in Pittsburgh. Yeah, you kind of think well, the first goal is probably really crucial, to be fair, as, as it is in most games, but it, it probably really is in this game. You know, if Wake Forest get it, what happens to Pitt then to their, you know, do, do they continue or do, do their heads drop? If Pitt get it, that obviously gives Pitt a little bit more of a boost. What's that do to Wake Forest? One nil down, you know, a difficult place for them to come as well. So I think the first goal is going to be crucial in this game. Talk about a Pitt team too, coming off a tough result, also losing Ashley Moon as well to a knee injury in that one. And a team that's battled some injuries all year long and Here's Fury with a chance on the outside of the box, just wide of that right post. As you see Moon there in the stands, watching on as the Panthers pick up their third early shot of the game. You see Moon's production. Someone who's really had some injury troubles over the course of her career, unfortunately, again, story the same this year for her. She has contributed extensively for the Panthers in 2024 as well, though, on her time on the field. Yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's a horrible loss. You hate to see players get injured, and, and that's just a, a real bad loss for Pitt this season. So, you know, we wish her the best and a, and a speedy recovery. 
Amaral refreshes things at the back for the Demon Deacons, who are still looking for their first shot tonight. A bit of possession, get on the ball a little bit now, maybe just slow the tempo of the game down. Czar Chavoshi off to Ansboro again. As Hanks takes the throw in her. After the first few minutes where no whistles were blown, a few fouls in the last five or ten minutes here. Both teams picking up the physicality a little bit. In the middle part of this first half. Yeah, it's just got a little bit a little bit scrappy the last couple of minutes, so just need someone to settle. Here's small. And that's what Murphy does really well. She holds the ball up really well. She brings the midfielders into the game. Johnson looking for Hanks. Wells doing the defending there is She's able to clear that one off the foot of Hanks and out of play for a goal kick. Lucia Wells, such an interesting player for these Panthers, came into pit as more of a forward type player. She's transitioned to the back, and the transition has been about as seamless as it gets. She has been a fixture on the back line so far for the Panthers and really does a nice job defending it as a, a role player who's kind of able to do a little bit of everything. Yeah, she's a good player. She's she's quick, she's athletic, she's, she's extremely physical as well. Um, not the tallest of players, but she's physical, you know, she showed there. And she's smart as well, she knows the game as well. Um, she's a really smart player as well. And she's really good on the ball as well, so. Never hurts to have the type of player you can kind of slot in anywhere with the amount of injuries you'll accumulate over the course of the year. I mean, if someone gets injured up top, Lucia Wells can just slot into that nine spot as well. Yeah, and you need a couple of players like that. The players who are, you know, can be adaptable and play anywhere and, and, and not skip a beat, really. So, and, and Lucia's one of those players where she could play. We'd have to ask her maybe about being a goalkeeper, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Morris shot from way out. Just missed the high post there from Colton. Yeah, that's a good strike, to be fair, and confident goalkeeping as well. She kind of watched it all the way over, so, but a good strike. Good turn and a good strike. First shot for Wake Forest, Ellie Breach. Forced to kind of watch that one fly by. A mixed bag season for her. He's made five saves in a clean sheet against Miami, then gave up four in just under 64 minutes at Florida State. Really in her first year where she has gotten the reins as the pit goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's, she's made some good saves over the season, and, you know, like, keep going back to last, last weekend at Florida State. It's probably just one of those games. Um, you know, but she's, she's had a good season. She's made saves. She's kept shut out, so... She's certainly, she's certainly doing well for Pitt this year. Pardon me, that was pretty much her second full season. Last year was really her f first extensive experience in net for the Panthers, leading them to that Elite Eight. The year before, backed up Caitlin Lazzarini, who she just passed on the all-time wins list for this Pitt team, just kind of illustrating the amount of success they've had as a team over these last couple years. Yeah, they've been fantastic. And part of that success, obviously, we all know is that they score a lot of goals, but they also don't they haven't concede many goals either. And, Again, last Saturday or last weekend against Florida was a little bit. Maybe just one. Of I mean, 17 all season and seven in one game. So, you know, that, that tells the story. Talking to Ben Waldrum during the week, it was just one of those games that everything goes wrong for you and everything goes right for the opponent. Pitt's still trying to sort of crack the code of Florida State since sort of. over the last couple of years. That has still been a code that they haven't yet cracked, and they're looking to do so sort of maybe not this year, but 
in seasons to come try and sort of maintain their stay at the top of the ACC. And beating Florida State will be a big part in that. Yeah, I mean, Coach Waldem, you know, and the staff, they've certainly created a culture here, and it's a culture of winning, which is what you want, um, you know, and that'll be one of the things they want to change is the Florida State results. Hanks getting behind the defense. Forest on the board, they go up 1-0 on the road. Yeah, it's, it's a great ball through, a little diagonal ball through. Takes a decent touch, and it's a good finish into the bottom corner. Um, I think Pitt kind of just lost the concentration a little bit there at the back and the shape, um, and, and that diagonal ball got through. We talked about the speed up top for Wake Forest in this group of forwards. Hanks putting it on display there, getting behind the defense. Just too much for Wells in that Pitt back line. Yeah, just lost the shape a little bit there, and it, it did take a little bit of an awkward bounce, a hard one to defend, but let's not take anything away from it. It's a really good finish into the bottom corner, about the only place you could put it. So in a first half where Pitt seemed to have more control, at least from the offensive side of things early on, Wake Forest able to get that critical first goal that you were talking about and take a 1-0 lead. Yeah, now this is where you look for reaction from Pitt. Now, what do they do? Just, you know, hopefully they just don't, they don't melt. They just they carry on playing how they've been playing. They're getting chances. They're getting shots on goal. You know, probably a little bit unfortunate to be 1-0 down in all fairness. So just, just keep playing and, and they'll get themselves back into the game. Go really one on three against three defenders there for Wake. Really nice play, so Pitt will get a free kick in a very advantageous spot right outside the box. Excellent play there by Abby Doden there. A, a really good play. Strong on the board, strong there. She's got three players. And that, you know, she's drawn the foul, which, and this is a promising position now for Pitt. A team that attributes a lot of their success to this efficiency off of the set pieces. Caulfield and Shapansky up top. It'll be Caulfield to take. Up the other end, draw the free kick, get a shot on goal, so good response. Johnson off to Hanks. One on one with Wells. Hanks wins the battle, but the whistle blows. Good play there by Wells. She was strong. She drew the foul. Hanks not a fan of that call. Oh, she won possession cleanly, but the Panthers once again We'll take possession on the free kick from Zalski. About 19.20 to go here in the first half of play. Shots 4-2 to two in favor of the Panthers, but Wake Forest leads where it matters on the scoreboard, 1-0. On the goal from Kaya Hanks. Really good ball into the box, a good chance for Abby Odin goes over the crossbar. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good ball in there. Um, you know, it's a teasing one. Does the keeper come? Does the keeper stay? She decided to stay. They just couldn't quite get her head over the ball there. It's, it's an awkward one. How in the world did they tee that one up? Free kick from way out and right where it needed to be to Abby Oden. Just couldn't keep it down. Yeah, it's just got a little bit underneath it, but it's a really good jump. I mean, she got high there. She got above the defenders comfortably. Another good ball in. And again, it's, it's a response from Pitt. It's another chance. Gagne was looking for Mellonhorse, but the pass went a little bit behind. Field off to Johnson, back to Hanks. They go back and forth down the left side. And if you're Wake Forest now, you get sort of the luxury of not needing to sort of rush anything. We've seen them take their time at the... a little bit and say, hey, Pitt, you got to make your move now first. Yeah, they're going to, you know, keep, keep possession a little bit now. And passes and just see maybe they can draw Pitt out and, and maybe start getting the ball in between the lines. Morris, Hanks again. 
Nice defending there from Zalski to win possession, but Hanks able to keep that one in play as it did go over the line. Murphy trying to flank up the left side there. That was certainly a close call, that one. Just got caught in possession there a little bit. Close yeah, call is not, right. Yeah. Just bar barely past that line there. We'll say good call from the line. Yeah. Cross from side, looking for Murphy, and a nice play from Zalski to defend on that cross. Yeah, Zalski did well there. She, she followed a the runner there. She got a body in between her, and, and she got a little touch on that as well. So good defending. Here's Fury. Panthers with some speed going the other way now. Fury trying to make a move. Really good defending there from Chavoshi. Once again, trying to work in transition. It's been Abby Odin as the facilitator so far for Pitt. Yeah, she had a good sort of, you know, 20 plus minutes of this game opening up as well. So a couple of chances for her as well. So certainly a threat and, and you know full well she's going to get a couple more shots on goal. Yeah. Pitt, one of the highest shot rates in the country and Fury and Abby Odin, the two players on that rush, a big part of that equation. Yeah, some absolutely amazing stats for shots on goal throughout the season for Pitt. It is incredible, really. It'll be Steltzer in for Gagne, the first substitutions of the night so far. Gagne's been good so far for the Panthers as they'll bring her off here. And you see Wake Forest, and a tough team to beat anyway, but when they score first, just about unbeatable. Yeah, that, that's a fantastic stat for them, you know, uh, uh, unbeaten in 11 games when going 1-0 up, so, you know, but hey, they, they've got to lose at some point, so, yeah. you know, that, that's got to be Pitt's attitude now is, you know, let's change that. Let's make that 10-1-1. One, one and one. It is really gut check time for Pitt in a really a must win game going down early. A team that really thrives in the second half of play, but still something they want to try and take care of before the break if they can. That's the one advantageous part of sort of giving up early is you sort of have a lot of time to, you know, work your way back in. But against a team like this, it's a tall task. Yeah, there's, there's plenty of time in the game, pl plenty of time, you know, in the first half still to, to get something out of this game. So. You know, I don't, I don't think they'll be panicked too much just yet. And so, you know, the coaching staff won't be. They're going to keep trying to play. They've created chances. They've had opportunities. So it's not it's not a lack of opportunities. Another chance here up the middle. Hanks on the run again. As it'll be blown dead and it will have to do some more defending. Yeah, I think the referee played. He, he did play a good advantage there um, to, to let it go through on goal. We maybe played it a little bit too long. Maybe the advantage had gone, and you know, Pitt did well to get the ball back. So, but now they've got a defender free kick. I'll tell you what, Kaya Hanks has been a headache for this Pitt back line in the first half. Oh, she's quick, and she she makes some good runs. She, she makes some straight runs. She makes some diagonal runs. She goes across the, the back line as well. So, certainly a handful. It'll be Chavoshi on the free kick. Wake Forest. Good ball in. Steered away as the flag goes up for offside. But yeah, good defending. Um, again, she, she won that first header, which is crucial in there. She got the ball away, but the call was offside anyway. Abby Odin, good touch there, trying to get that one forward a little bit as she gets the ball back again.
played largely in the midfield for both teams so far. Yeah, it's, it's another free kick as well. I mean, the free kick count certainly, uh, certainly getting up there now. Kind of been a bit of a stop-start, sort of last 15, 16 minutes. Bro. Just over 12 to play in this first half. Mellenhorst. Nice move to get free there. Off to Steltzer on the right side. Pass over to Fury, looking back for Steltzer. The pass goes a little bit behind her. Still a free ball, but poked away by Colton. Again, some good plays, some good little passes there. Good passes of play there for Pitt. Again, they're just, they're just knocking on the door. Steltzer coming off the bench as that one goes out of play for a corner. Or excuse me, it will be a, no, it will be a corner. Oh, just kidding, it'll be a throw in. <laughs> tough, tough to tell the indication there on the far side of the field. We're blocked a little bit by the, uh, the seats here from our vantage point in the press box, but. <laughs> Colton fouled there by Minas and I think this is going to be a yellow I think card. I jinxed it earlier on with saying there weren't very many fouls. And the last five or ten minutes, especially, we've seen a, an uptick in fouls as Minas picks up the yellow. Yeah, I think that, that foul count is certainly getting higher and higher. Right now, five to four. Five for Pitt, four for Wake Forest. Yellow, it seems more than that as well. It really does. <laughs> I think a lot of them have come pretty late, but... Is the first part of the game, it was pretty flowy and not a lot of stoppages. And now it's, it's been kind of stop and start these last 15, 20 minutes. Ball in from Chavoshi again. Another chance for Hanks. Steered away that time. A great opportunity right in point blank range. Fury, another nice play to gain possession. Pitt's got numbers going the other way. She tries to push forward for Abby Odin. But it looks like Sai will win the race there. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great chance there. Oh. And, and you've got to wonder how she's got that much time in, in, in the penalty area there as well. She took a little bit of a heavy touch. If she'd taken a better touch there, that could well have been 2-0. It, it's a good ball in. It, it's gone pretty deep into the area. It's a good win first header, but just there. Oh, if just a hot, heavy yeah. touch maybe. It's a little bit of a better touch there. That, that could be 2-0. I'll tell you what, I'm not a coach, but... I have a guess as to what Randy Walger might be doing in the half, putting the number nine up on the whiteboard and just circling it a bunch of times because <laughs> she has been a real headache for these Panthers. Another great chance for her, almost made it 2 nothing there. Has the one lone goal in the game so far. Yeah, she's been, she's been a threat for sure. Venus comes off, it'll be Doni in for the Panthers. <laughs> But you can you can see why Wake Forest have won games. You know they they are they, they're good at the back. They've got a good goalkeeper, but going forward, their movement can be really good. Yeah, they have defended it really well, and they're doing sort of what Pitt has been trying to do all year, and that is converting on their chances in the final third. They haven't had a ton of them, but on the ones that they've had. They've done a really good job at getting the best chance that they can out of it. Here's Fury. Can you just see maybe wait for it? Just try and take the sting out of it a little bit now. Keep the ball a little bit, move it around. They'll be really happy if they get to half time one zero up. They'll be they'll be really happy with this. Another road game here for Wake Forest after a 16 day break. Went down to Dallas and got three points there in a hard fought game against SMU, and they're now coming up to Pittsburgh as well. So a, a tough little mini road trip here for the Demon Deacons over the course of the last six days. 
yeah, I mean, a flight into Dallas, then a flight here as well. So, you know, and then the, the 16 days off is, is, is <laughs> crazy, you know. So, you know, after talking to coach about it this week and, and he was, you know, he, he couldn't believe it. it was a 16-day stretch. He said, well, it helps out the... Two weeks, two days, it, that, that's tough. But, you know, I, I did like the answer in terms of, from an education point of view as well, it, yeah. you know, it was it was really good, you know, to, to, to allow the players to get caught up on work or, or whatever they needed to do in, the, in their class. So... Even better for them, I think. Steltzer, Crosser looking back post as Amaral will bring it in on the jump there. Yeah. Opportunity there set up by Abby Oden at the top. Pit point of view, you'd probably like somebody a little bit, maybe crashing a little bit in there and... Just taking the chance that it, it may fall to them. And just taking the chance that it, it may fall to them. As much as maybe initially thought so far tonight, it gives off to Steltzer and then to Mellenhorst. Wake Forest just doing a really nice job at the back. Had that early opportunity for Mellonhorst, but since then it has been really locked down back there. Yeah, they've done well. They've kept it to a couple of shots from distance, um, a couple of crosses in there as well. So but they're, they're just trying to take a little bit of the sting out of the game now and, and settle the ball down. And, And when they're ready to go forward, they'll, they'll go forward. But you can just see the movement now is is get, getting ready to play that ball. Shapansky here for the Panthers from a ways out, just wide of the post. Just talking about it, opportunities from way out. The Panthers haven't really been able to work in to the penalty area very much so far tonight. No, just had that, you know, the, the chance really in, in the first few minutes. But that's that's a decent decent effort from Szymanski. Maybe she could have took it, maybe a couple more, a couple of steps, a little bit forward. But decent effort. Be Ava Boyd into the game for the Panthers, the transfer from Michigan State. Maybe another chance building here for Wake Forest on the attack. At the time it was Hannah Johnson pushing ahead. Again, Katie Zelski there sweeping up at the back. You know, did did a good job there. She took control of the situation, which could have been a tricky situation with the goalkeeper coming off the line as well. Abby Odin again on the ball for the Panthers. Doing a really nice job of getting some space. Good first touch there from Steltzer to work into some open room. Seltzer really has come on. She's kind of sort of been a good option out here on the right for Pitt since she's come on the field. So put a couple of decent balls in, had some good little touches as well. Caulfield over to Mellenhorst. Excellent play there. Under five minutes to play here in the first half. Left side, it's Doney. Lee, and then Zalski. Wells gets the pass back from Steltzer. Nice move from Wells, gets some room. Shot blocked that time. A nice play again on the defending by Ansborough, who has been money all night. Yeah, good defending, but good play again by Wells there. 
Here's Johnson looking for some reinforcements, but Zielski able to steer that one away with no issue. Off to Sarah Shapansky and back over to Abby Oden. Just see Pitt just increase the tempo a little bit when they're on the ball now for the last sort of couple of minutes or so. Sapansky's getting on the ball a lot more now than in the last sort of three, four, five minutes. Stelzer looking for options. We'll take that with the corner. The second corner of the night for the Panthers. And Sarah Shapansky to take. Gagne took the first one since she has come off Shapansky and now on the near side of the field to try and give Pitt some offense in the latter part of this first half. Towards the middle, looking for Abby Oden again, just a little bit high for her that time. Looked like she had some space, though, in the middle of the box. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's a good ball in. And again, the, the good thing for Pitt is that they're winning that first header. When crosses come in, they're all winning that first header. They had a free kick a, a little bit ago. The corner there, they've won the first header. Yeah, I mean, I mean that, that's a good sign for Pitt. It's a little bit worrying if you wake Forest, but if a, from a Pitt point of view, that, that's a good, it's a positive. You're winning the first ball in there. You can just see now, they're just pressing that little bit more now, Pitt. See Ansborough at the back here. Fallon her from Boyd. So some physical play here so far in the first half from both sides. Seven fouls for the Panthers, four for Wake Forest in the first 43 minutes and change. Great play there by uh, Caulfield there. Very calm. Panthers taking some time here in the midfield to try and build up maybe one last opportunity before the break. That one's turned over to Chavoshi. Something about Wake Forest that I've noticed so far, just nothing looks rushed. They never look like they're panicked. Even there when they have pressure on the ball from the defense, they're just making the right passes and able to get the clears when they need to. Yeah, they certainly look comfortable on the ball, and you know they, they, they know where they know where the plays are. They know where the pass has got to go. Be has got to go. So Stelzer into the box, no threat there. Easily gobbled up there by Amaral again in the final 37 seconds of the first half where Pitt is still looking for answers. Eight shots for them, but nothing on the scoreboard, and Wake Forest has converted on one of their two shots. Maybe one more chance here for Wake, as the defending done that time by Wells. The good pass looking for Hanks once again as the half. Again, it's will wrap up. It's a good run through, but it's also really good defending there by Wells. One nothing going into the break for Wake Forest. A lead going into half. Something that these Demon Deacons have been very comfortable with so far this season. Unbeaten in seven contests. Pitt looking to dig themselves out of a one nothing hole in the first half. They will start in possession. Here with Theory trying to get back into this one. Start with Zalski in the back. And Wake Forest is completely content on playing the same type of game that it was in the first half, where the majority in the midfield and you know calm, cool, and controlled in the possession for them. Yeah, I mean they'll, they'll be happy. One zero. They can control the tempo of the game right now. As the game goes on, if it stays like this, you, you know Pitt are going to start pushing more and more players up, which which will create some gaps up front as well for for Wake Forest to exploit. 
Pitt looking for their first ranked win of the season. They've had some trouble against ranked opponents so far. And another run here from Hanks pushing ahead as Breach steers that one out. And Wake Forest trying to extend their unbeaten streak to seven now. Far and they are picking up right where they left off here in Pittsburgh. Now going the other way though. Steltzer on the right side and she trips on what could have been a really good opportunity. Really spreading that sort of trying to spread that back line of Pitt out. Small giving chase to Lee in possession. As the Panthers push forward with Fury now. It seems like any time one of the Panthers gets possession, especially in the middle of the field, they just get immediately swarmed by two or three Wake Forest defenders. That again being the case there with Mellonhorse as she turns that one over. Yeah, they defend really well, Wake Forest. They, they get around the ball, they get around the players. So, you know, they make it really hard. Hanks. Back over to Morris. Sort of high-flying offense that gets a lot of really quality opportunities has not been the case today so far. No, I think, you know, give Wake Forest a lot of credit. They've, they've defended really well. They've kept the shape. They've made it really hard for Pitt today. Um, you know, and there's been moments for Pitt. They've had the chance. They've had a couple of chances. So, you know, and there certainly will be a chance here for them as well. While it stays 1-0. Murphy swarmed by three pit defenders there, including Wells, who comes up with the ball and is able to push it out of play. She holds the ball up really well. Big play for Wake Forest. She does hold the ball up well. She, she gets draws probably a lot of fouls, I'd imagine. That one goes out of play. Wake Forest looks like they're looking for a hand potentially there. They don't get it, though, as Hanks and others consulting the referees about it. We'll see it again here. Looking for maybe Lee's right hand there, and they'll give it a check. It was away from her body, but... It's, it's, I think it's, is it in a natural position or a natural position? She's kind of right. moving that way, I'm not sure. I saw one given in the Premier League this past weekend <laughs> exactly like that, so, I mean... If it's a if it's a hands away from a body, then there's a chance this may get given. And it's every sports fan's favorite phrase. It's is there indisputable video evidence? That's what's needed to be overturned. You get a good look here from our crew, from behind the net, looking that right hand it's, of it's, Lee, and it's, you could see it. It's close as well. Yeah. You know, it's definitely it's, contact. Yeah, it's but she's really close to as well. I mean. See it making contact sure. there. Really good look there from our crew in the control room. Oh. Got a feeling it. I mean, you can definitely see the forest players asking the referee, yeah. saying, "Hey, well, this yeah. deserves a review." See Hank saying she was right there and saw it all unfold. This this is a huge decision as well because you go up two and. You're really putting some distance between you and Pitt. Yeah, especially just right at the start of the uh, second half as well. Trying to take the air out of Pitt early in the second half. So we've got another look here. I mean, I think the two factors looking, how close is she to the player when she heads it? You know, he's just so much gray area too with this rule. Is she in an unnatural position? Right. Hand? <laughs> You could say her hand was going up, too, when she was sort of yeah. trying to make that tackle, but we'll get the call here. No penalty again. So 0 for 2 on the video reviews as Wake Forest is looking for answers. Tony Deleuze is, seems quite confused about the ruling there. I think maybe probably the closeness of her, how close she was to It did. Her hand was certainly away from her body as well. Yeah. It's just like you were saying, as a matter of if, if it was a natural position. And I think 
And she was referee close. circled there. She was close to the player who headed it as right. well. And that's hard to get out of the way. Just so many variables yeah. with the rule, and it's it's a lot of times a judgment call. Nice play defending there from Fury. Murphy had some space to work on the far side of the field on the transition there, but Zalski continuing her extremely strong night on defense. Who'd be a referee? <laughs> <laughs> Tough job, man. <laughs> It's also worth noting, too, that they did not rule it a handball on the field. I think maybe the call would have gone the other way if they had ruled it a handball initially, but nevertheless, they stay with the initial call on the field of no penalty. And yeah. Deleuze again unhappy with the touch possession there for Pitt, but safe to say his blood pressure might have gone up in the last couple minutes. <laughs> So Pitt really staying alive here in the second half. A second, a second goal there, given the impending potential PK, would have been really tough hill yeah. to climb. And I think that was about, what, the same time into the first half, maybe, when Pitt yeah. got theirs as well. Foul here as Abby Odin goes down, and Morris will pick up another foul for Wake Forest, their sixth of the night. See there now, Pitt just really trying to increase the tempo now and, and get on the ball, get the ball moving. Shapansky there took that free kick quick. Nice one touch pass there from Shapansky, a chance for a couple players to feel that one, but eventually cleared out. You just haven't seen that same kind of jump we're used to seeing from Pitt, especially offensively so far tonight. Uh, credit goes to Wake Forest, but if you're Pitt, you got to start kind of working some sparks up top, maybe. Yeah, they, they just need to get something going. One chance, one good ball in, which creates a chance, and, and that can spark a, a little bit more energy about them then. Coach Deleuze also worth mentioning, given a warning on that last little dispute with the referees upon the review. Hansborough, really nice pass up there to Hanks. Johnson as Steltzer pushes that one out of bounds. That'd be an interesting 10 minutes. What do Wake Forest do now? Do they just try and kill it a little bit, or do they go for the second? You know, Pitt are going to have to start putting more numbers up, you know, forward soon to, to get something out of the game. The ball's certainly in Pitt's court at this point. Wake Forest really no need to put themselves in any kind of risk as small fields and pushes back towards the middle. Johnson looking for Hanks on the right side. A great ball in. And Wake Forest scores. It's Murphy. 2-0 Wake. That, that's a fantastic work goal. The, the ball through and then the cross in and the finish. That's a really good goal by Wake Forest. Well worked. A good ball in and a good finish, a difficult finish in, in off the crossbar, I think so. Hanks just doing a great job again on the far side of the field. Now a goal and an assist for her and a fantastic finish from Murphy to boot. This is a great little ball through there. And then Hank, yeah, that, I mean, that's a great ball in and a good Oof. finish by Murphy as well. Really nothing Breach could have done there. No, not all. I mean, she, she didn't have a chance in uh, any of the goals tonight, so. Whoa, what a finish for Murphy. That ball was airborne heading into the box on the cross and made that look as easy as you possibly could. Murphy scored here last year and adds another one here in 2024 to give Wake a huge 2-0 lead. Doni comes on for Gagne as well in the meantime. Yeah, Pitt, Pitt need to get, get a response in, in the next sort of few minutes, really. Another run for Hanks going the other way, a player down, though, for Wake. And it is desperation time for the Panthers. And 
now they really can control the tempo of the game now Wake Forest and and see what happens they don't need to score another goal you know they can, they can just keep possession and and, and pick things off. Pitt are going to have to work hard now, win that ball back and, and try and get something. At least if they get a goal in you know, the next 10, 15 minutes, it gives them some hope as well. We know they can score goals. I mean, last year, three goals here in the last 25 yeah. minutes. So we know they can score. And coming in, we're looking at this Wake Forest team and it's you look at the box score specifically and you just say what exactly stands out about them they're not necessarily in the top 10 of any specific category but you watch their games and they just do all the little things so well and that's exactly why they've gone up here today as Stelter's cross goes short of the near post yeah they, they did the simple things really well um, they're organized they're obviously well, well well coached you know I mean 28 years coaching this record. I mean, coach has done a great job uh, with this program and they're organized, the shape is good. And, and when they go forward and they break, they've got some quick players and they've got goal scorers. And in this age where the transfer portal is utilized so much, it's a Wake Forest team that returns a lot of the players that they had last year as well. And you got to think that helps build a sense of cohesion amongst the group. You have Emily Colton coming in as well, but someone who has ACC playing experience in her, just adding to this group that already has such a great cohesion and what has really pushed them to how good they've been this year. Yeah, I mean, they've certainly, they've got something about them. They, they certainly play well as a team. They, they, they look like they enjoy playing with each other as well. So, you know, they, they've done, they've had a really good game tonight. I think they've been, they've been pretty solid, to be fair. And like we said before, they've really only kept pits and really mainly it anything outside the area really other, other than a one attempt Minas coming back on for the Panthers on a yellow put that cross in the box they're looking for Fury I had a little bit of space to work just a little bit too far for her so another chance for the Panthers goes by the wayside and a Hanks one touch pass up for Murphy looking for goal number two but the flag goes up really good chance again there for Wake but Murphy a few steps early there yeah good chance there just slightly offside but again, good play. They play that little, try and play that diagonal ball over as well again. And, and that's a clever little ball through and she just strayed, you know, half a yard offside maybe if that. Here's Fury. Another really nice play defensively from Ansborough. And you see these pit attackers with Fury specifically, it feels like she'll get in on the ball a lot of the time in the final third, but just the reinforcements are sometimes a little bit late to come. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at the, the second goal just for Wake Forest and, you know, we, they put a really good cross in. We have somewhat of an identical cross a, a couple of minutes ago. Pitt have a, an identical cross over there a couple of minutes ago and, and it goes straight out of play. So the, the, there's differences there sometimes. Here's Olivia Lee. Caulfield and then Zalski up the right side looking for Doney, but a nice play there from Hanks. To once again slow things down and slow is just fine regarding the pace of play for the Demon Deacons as this clock is gonna run the same regardless. Yeah, they'll be quite happy. They've got the back four back there to hold him midfielders. They're pretty set right now. And they, and they know full well that when they break, they've got the pace to break as well. So they'll be quite happy to run this down. Week with just two shots on goal, but you'll notice that's the same number they have up on the scoreboard. They'll take that any day of the week as Colton moves ahead. Another chance here for Hanks looking for goal number two as Breach comes off her line is able to push that one away. So a potentially back-breaking goal able to be staved off there by Ellie Breach. Good goalkeeping there by Ellie Breach again. But again, good play by Wake Forest. Just, just a clever little ball through and a good run again. So it really is just a little clever ball through. Little slip there. She'll be disappointed she's not finished that for, for the second of a game, second goal of the game for herself. Safe to say Pitt will be happy when Kaya Hanks hops back on that bus and heads out of town because she continues to produce up front. Had that assist earlier on as well. 
And a free kick opportunity. Nice play by Lee there. Mellonhorse and the Panthers looking for something here in the second half, just over a half hour to play. You look there, it's one against one, two, three, four, yep. five players there, and pitchers can't get the numbers up. Something else we talked about with Coach Deleuze, the fact that he's not as much of a subber as a lot of other coaches. He, he likes to stick with his starting 11 a lot of the time and, you know, make some adjustments accordingly. But overall, sticking with a lot of players in the starting lineup. You see the goal there for Murphy. A lot of these players staying on since the start of the game as well. Maybe a chance here for Pitt on goal and Amaral. Good goal Once again, elevates to make the save. So it's a decent crossing, just, just really crying out for somebody to attack it, but good goalkeeping. Small off to Morris. Over to Hanks. Hanks on Wells again. Working outside the penalty area and Pushes away for a goal kick. Hanks looking for a corner, but doesn't get it. Yeah, good defending there as well. But you, you look again, they, you know, they've got the ball out there on the left, and there's three or four Wake Forest players there. Pitt got the ball out here, and there's five Wake Forest players and, and one Pitt player, so. Grace Pettit on for the Panthers. As Doni will come off, Pettit, the transfer from Missouri. One of the players that really brings a veteran presence to this pit squad. Extensive experience as a power conference player. Small, working her way in. We'll try to wire a shot off there, but not enough on it to get past Lee. Way calmly in possession, trying to look for goal number three, Murphy, the cross. Steered out that time by Caulfield. Demon Deacon still in possession as Abby Oden finally able to break it up for a second, but Abby Colton now on for Wake Forest as well, the sister of Emily, was in possession there. You can really see now Wake Forest really starting to move the ball and they've got a confidence about their play now. Wake Forest offense continuing to produce. They've won a lot of these close games, but putting up multiple goals again for the fifth consecutive game tonight. Murphy with a lot of room to work on the right side. Pettit coming over to try and defend Murphy. A shot on goal. Really good save from Breach. Excellent goalkeeping. E excellent play from Murphy to start with, but excellent goalkeeping. You just see how wide they get, and they start really wide, and Murphy really started in a wide position there. See the right foot of Breach there, just almost on the spikes of that boot there. Saves Pitt again. Murphy not slowing down, cutting in again. And she's defended again that time by Doney as Murphy does go down and hey, will be a corner kick for Wake again, who continues to put on the pressure in the final 30 minutes or so. Yeah, M Murphy's been fantastic tonight, especially this second half. Holds the ball up well, then she gets it. She can run at plays as well. And, and she can finish as well. We've seen that tonight as well. So she's had a really good game tonight, especially the second half. Beg your pardon, that was petted on the defending for Pitt that time, but nevertheless, a second corner of the night for Wake Forest. Fury out with it that time. No real opportunity there for the Demon Deacons as Wells pushes ahead for the Panthers. Trying to win a foot race that time, but Scythe is able to win it back there and a really nice defensive play as Pitt was trying to work something in transition there. Unable to do so again, and that has been the story of the night. Yeah, again, just well defended again, but again, not many people up there with Wells. And again, you know, Wake Forest get the ball back, and they're just, just playing the game now. 
A little bit of a miss hit maybe there. Now Shapansky in possession for the Panthers. As the flag goes up as there was a Panther a few steps offside there. It looked like Abby Oden. Just the little things the Panthers trying to fine tune in the latter 30 minutes of the game. Yeah, and the just not much going here in the second half of play. They had the shot advantage at 8-2 to two after the first half, but Wake Forest has continued their stranglehold on the game in the final 45. Here's Pettit again. Caulfield off to Wells, then to Minas. Nice one-touch pass there for Wells. Panthers trying to get something going with Abby Oden. Mellonhorse off to Fury, but again defended successfully that time by Laurel Lansborough and out of play. Yeah, I think Coach Deleuze will, will be really happy with this second half. You know, they, they came out strong, got the goal pretty early on, and, and they've really dominated the game since halftime. Pitt can get one back here, there's a chance. Trying to build some momentum of which they have not had a lot of so far on this Thursday night. You had the early chance from Mellonhorse too, and you were thinking this is, this is going to be the game where they sort of turn it around and get those really good opportunities. And I think it's fair to say still to this point that might be their best opportunity in the first two minutes of the game. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, it was it was good defending in all fairness in the end. You know, the, the referee decided not to give a penalty after reviewing it. So you, you have to put that down to good defending, but that really was probably one of the best chances of the game. Amaral all over to Chavoshi. Amaral only having to make one save so far tonight. Pitt has one shot on goal to Wake Forest four. Here's Colton. Again, look how wide they get, Wake Forest. Johnson on the throw in. Yeah, Buden again, really strong day in the midfield for the Panthers. Maybe a couple missed opportunities in the final third for her, but she's been really strong for them, winning possession in the one on ones and just doing a really nice job again. Yeah, she's worked hard. She's desperately trying to get a <laughs> way back into the game for Pitt. She's certainly not giving up and she, she's tackling. She's trying to work a magic and and just a wild game in the ACC also going on right now with Duke and Notre Dame tied at three small working in here for a chance that time versus number seven matchup with Duke and Notre Dame just an offensive showcase, it seems like. Yeah, I mean, that, that's that's crazy. Duke, of course, playing Wake Forest next. Notre Dame's got Pitt in Pitt's final game of the season coming up. Really trying to save this latter part of the season. Johnson, good run around the outside, and just unable to beat Lee to the edge. The pit having a lot of success in their last couple games at Ambrose or Bannock Field entering tonight, especially from an offensive standpoint, just hasn't been the story though through 67 plus minutes. Again, you, you have to give Wake Forest credit. They've done the homework. I'm sure they've watched the video. They know what to expect. And, and so far, sort of 22 minutes left, that they're putting a fully... ...back a little bit more. 
And that has been the opposite so far for Tony Deleuze's team, who continues to press and gets another chance on a corner here. As Breach picks up that ground ball with no issue. You think just one, one chance for Pitt, one goal, and, and, it, and it, it could change the game. Padded off to Wells. Chance here, Abby Oden in the box. Shot goes on goal and in, but the flag goes up for offsides. There was your chance for the Panthers, but a few steps too early. Yeah, that, that was the chance. I think that was close. I... Certainly was close. Yeah, yeah. a couple steps offsides yeah. was Abby Oden. It's a really good finish. That'd be a little bit of a confidence boost though. That that's you know, they've got the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, it may not have counted, but they created a chance there. Here's Hanks. Chance here for the Panthers. Again, Fury in the box, but she's the only one there. Can't receive that pass. Abby Odin trying to get possession back again, but she fouls. And this is a pit team looking to push for the postseason, but you got to think these last two games, if you can't get some points out of it, they may be on the outside looking in for the national tournament for the first time in three years. Yeah, I think next next Thursday's game away in Notre Dame, that, that's going to be a massive game now, especially, you know, if, if this result holds here. You know, if they, if they can get something out of this game still, then, you know, it still becomes a, a big game next week. But... I really think they're going to have to go there next week and try and get a result out of that game. Tell you what, they have looked a lot better in the last five minutes, though. Fury again pushing ahead for the Panthers on Johnson. Just an errant pass there looking for Shapansky, but once again, Wake Forest sniffing that one out. And you see Morris slowing down the pace a little bit with 19 to go. Caulfield off to Pettit. <laughs> Moving ahead, Ellie Caulfield. Middle. And shot goes wide there. And what do you think of that shot there? I don't know. I mean, it's going to take a lot to score from from there, yeah. you know, against a, any goalkeeper, really. So, I, I think they just they had a good little bit of possession there. Maybe keep it a little bit more. Through the middle. I think that's a little bit of a wasted opportunity, to be honest with you. But it's been, it's been a good last few minutes for Pitt there. They've certainly had a bit of possession of the ball. Had had the goal disallowed for offside and. Swanson comes in for Nikayla Small. Looks like that might have taken a deflection in front of the net, and Wake will get another corner. That's a really good save from Beach because she was going towards her right, and she had to adjust and go to her left. See here, Murphy winning another battle there in the corner. She had to recover there pretty quick. Looks like it deflected off of Lee yeah. as well. Yeah, she's starting to go to her right. That's a good save, and she's pushed really it out. That's a really good save. You're right. She was sort of, her momentum was carrying her to the right, but able to come back to her left and make the save. Pressure not done, though, for Wake. 
Murphy blocked that time by Caulfield. Here is the newly subbed in Wagonek for the Panthers. Just under 17 to go here from Ambrose Urbanic Field. Zach, give me Danny Fisher on the call for you here in a critical matchup in the latter part of the ACC season. Yeah, if it's going to happen for Pitt, it's going to have to happen soon. Pitt trying to do what they haven't been able to do all season long, and that is take down one of the higher ranked teams in the country. Don't have a ranked win so far this season. That was really the story of their campaign last year, sort of slaying the Giant over and over again. Just haven't been able to restore that MO. And Wake Forest just trying to keep on chugging in this latter part of the season in the ACC, which they have had so much success in so far. Yeah, I've been really impressed with Wake Forest tonight. I think they've, they've put in a really good performance. They've moved the ball around well. They've attacked well, defended well. You can see where they are, and, and that game on Sunday is going to be a really good game. Hanks dragged down that time by Pettit. Shots now even at nine apiece. Five on goal for Wake Forest, though, to just one for the Panthers. You know, that, that tells a, a lot of the story, to be honest with you. You know, the, the actual shots are on goal and saves made. So, you know, that's, that tells a big part of the story tonight. Feels like we've talked about Kaya Hanks for the most part tonight from the offensive side of things for Wake Forest as a few substitutions go in and out here in the final 15. But Emily Murphy has been right up there with her as well. Yeah, certainly a, a different player, but she, she holds the ball up well, and she is actually quicker than probably what people think she is. She's yeah. actually pretty quick. She's got an eye for goal. She's strong. Um, she brings players into the game. So, you know, she, she's a true leader, you know, and, that, and that's kind of what Coach alluded to at the week in the week was on our call with him is that she, she's a leader. Stelter. Far side of the field for Wagonek. There, that cross are just wide again. Th that's been some of the difference tonight. You know, Wake Forest to put in a couple of really good crosses, and Pitt have one there and sliced it out. As we mentioned, no break for this Wake Forest team. They head back home, but that's the good news. The bad news is you're playing the number one team in the country, and one that leads the ACC in shutouts as well. And that'll be just a fascinating matchup to watch because you look at the ACC. And you think of these teams all the time where it's North Carolina, it's Florida State, it's Stanford, but the number one and number two teams in the country are from the Atlantic Coast Conference, but maybe not two of the names you're expected to see up there from year in, year out. Yeah, it, it's going to be it's going to be a really good game on Sunday. It's going to be a battle, that is. Um, you know, if the results hold tonight as well, we, I think Duke are, are tying at Notre Dame right now, 3-3. So they've been in a battle yeah. tonight as well. So, you know, that, that could be a good thing for, for Wake Forest that Duke, Duke are in a battle tonight as well. You know, both teams having to travel as well. So, you know, th th there's no real advantage there for anybody. So, you know, that, that's really going to be a battle. And you see on that graphic as well, even teams like Virginia down at number 24, there are eight teams ranked in the ACC, and it's just you think you have a game even like this where it's it might take a lot out of you but you still have to play maybe one of these eight teams that are just continue to put the pressure on from a national standpoint as well you really get conditioned we were talking to coach to lose as well you really get conditioned for the national tournament after playing so many games in the ACC because there's a good chance the later you make it you're going to keep running into these Atlantic Coast Conference teams as well Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, it's such a it's such a good conference, and it's every game is a battle. Every game you've got to work hard to win it. You, you earn the right to win your game, and, and you really have to work hard, and and you have to have some good soccer players as well to win it. So Chelsea, or excuse me, Murphy contacted in the box there. Such a good conference. No call there as Murphy went down, but. Once again, just when she's in possession, good things generally happen for Wake Forest. And 
Pitt did a nice job there of steering away that opportunity. Here's Dempsey Brown. Johnson again, and you had that little spurt for the Panthers getting some offense, but besides that, Wake Forest has picked up right where they left off before that here in the second half as Murphy goes in possession again. One on one with Zalski. Maybe trying to again, take Murphy, some of that time off the clock. Murphy does well there, just holds the ball up, just puts it down there, wins a throwing for a team that can knock some seconds off now, get their breath back. I think the good thing with Pitt is uh, they haven't given up. The, you know, they've, they've tried to play, they've played some good soccer at times, but they certainly haven't given up. They've certainly come here to play, but they've just come up against a really good Wake Forest team. Brown from way out trying to go high and wide there of breach to no avail. And a Wake Forest team full of confidence. Yeah. I mean, you got to be at this point. You get the 16 day break, you think that might take some of the wind out of their sails, but they go down to Dallas, get a win against SMU, and then head back up to play a team that made the Elite Eight last year and returned a lot of players. And you put on a performance like this again on the road. It just keeps building confidence, and that's just such an edge, especially when you're playing in this kind of conference. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I mean they've just, you know, wins, wins, great confidence, and. Turnover here, Shapansky with a chance maybe for the Panthers to get a goal. She turns it over again though, and the story of the night, the Wake Forest defense just swarming the ball. Coming into play again there is Johnson. Trips up another pit player, looked like Steltzer on the far side. Excuse me, Wagonek. It's just that, Panthers. That, that, like you said before, that final third thing, that get, get that shot on goal, get a chance. You, you've been gifted a chance here, get a chance on goal. Yeah, maybe a few too many touches for Shapansky. Yeah. But you look at the defenders, though, closing really quickly. You saw Morris coming in from the far side there, just taking away any shot lane. Oh, yeah, there's four of them around there. So we'll get a stoppage for the subs here. Looks like Murphy headed off for Wake Forest. Played 70 minutes so far tonight, has that second goal, along with three shots as well. So another extremely successful day from Emily Murphy. Just over 10 to play here, Pitt looking for something. Yeah, Emily Murphy's had a fantastic game, especially second half. I mean, I, th I think she's been brilliant second half. Chapansky chips it for Boyd. Tripped up in the box. Certainly some contact there. Pitt looking for the call. And it will go out of play as we will get, it looks like maybe another review here, and we will. This is big for Pitt. Yeah, th th this is a big review. You see Boyd looking for the call there. You can sometimes look at the player's body language and she looks a little bit nervous there, the defender, that this could be a penalty. All right, Danny, make the call. I'm going to go with penalty. I didn't see, there's not a lot of ball there. I'm going to go penalty on that one. I mean, I, I almost would go as far to say this should be a pretty quick review. Yeah, I mean. I mean, that's, that's the main thing you're looking for. Yeah, I think that's a definite penalty. Out of three tonight, that's the one. It's the first, yeah, we yeah. finally get one after three reviews, we think. But then again, you never really know. And I think the longer the review goes, the more in doubt it becomes yeah. for Pitt. But I this mean, certainly looked like a penalty at I first mean, glance. I mean, for me, she's died. Yeah, she's yeah, got no ball there. Yeah. I, I don't know how it can take this long. I mean, that's pretty. Ansboro doing the defending is, you see the referees there gathered around the monitor. Critical call here with 9.43 to play. If Pitt converts here in the hypothetical that they do get a penalty, the, the rush is on in the final 10. I'd be surprised if this isn't a penalty. I mean, it, it, I'd be shocked. I think it has to be. And we'll get the call. Yeah. It is a penalty. Yeah. Is that the answer that Pitt was looking for to try to get back in this game? They will get a penalty. And here's the look. Great look from our yeah. crew again. No ball there. 
And good, good play by Ava Boyd there to draw that in as well. Be a yellow as well for Ansboro. She's drawn the foul in there, and, and that's good, good center forward play by Ava Boyd. Looks like it'll be Fury to take it for the Panthers. Their leading goal scorer so far this season, looking for a huge one from the spot here in the final 10. Amaral, who hasn't had a lot of action so far tonight, being called to task under the spotlight here for Wake. Amaral and Fury, one on one. Fury. High of the crossbar. I think that just sums up pitch night. You know, that, oh. that's a golden chance there. Just really taking the air out of the Panthers. You get the chance you were looking for just over the crossbar. Pitts Knight in a nutshell. And you see the reaction there from Fury. And any win that they had in their sails is taken out. Yeah, that, that's the chance, that's the golden chance. Here's Pettit in the final 9-18 in this second half of play. Very tripped up there, no call. Fantastic defending from Wake again. And you gotta think, just so tough to recover from that at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, it's deflating really, but you know, I give her credit, she stepped up to try and take it, and sometimes it's just not your night and yep. not your game, and, and this is one of those games, unfortunately, for Pitt. Two in a row for the Panthers now, where it just seems like just things aren't clicking for them. Maybe for the first time in a couple years where this team doesn't seem like they're just a force offensively, just they haven't been able to find that spark in the last couple games. Granted, you're playing some really talented opponents, but when you want to get into that national discussion, as they say, you've got to beat the best to be the best. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. And, and you know, that's, we've also got to give a lot of credit to Wake Forest. You know, they've come here and, and been put in a thoroughly professional performance for the most part. You know, just the one kind of little glitch there with, with the penalty. Just one shot on goal still for the Panthers. That's 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 their calling card is getting shots to the net. Even if they aren't necessarily the best opportunities, they make the goalie make the save. Just haven't been able to do that tonight. No. Amaral with one save so far. Yeah, I think that's just kind of the story of the night for Pitt. And you know, Wake Forest, they've taken their chances to be fair, and you know, and and that's what they've done. They've taken two chances there, and they've taken them really well and defended well, kept kept Pitt limited to only a, a couple of real chances, including the penalty. So, you know, you have to give credit to Wake Forest. Nine point eight shots per game on goal for the Panthers, fifth in D one. Unable to find that tonight. Here's Burst a chance with the left foot. And the outside of the penalty area goes just over. Chloe Burst in her fourth minute of play. Wires another shot there for Wake Forest, their 11th. Hannah Johnson will come on for Kaya Hanks, who once again puts together a spectacular performance for the Demon Deacons. Yeah, she's been fantastic tonight. She's quick, she makes some good runs. She took a goal really well. She's had a fantastic game. Abby Odin looking for something for the Panthers. Chips ahead for Boyd. Boyd, similar spot here to where she got the penalty drawn and 
Looking for the corner, and the Panthers will get it. Yeah, she's, she's given Pitt a little bit up top and, and giving Wake Forest something to think about Ava Boyd has. So, you know, some two good little plays there in, in the space of a few minutes. One way she drew the penalty, and then she's won a corner kick there. Pitt hasn't had much of a spark tonight, but Boyd has provided a little bit up top for the Panthers. Into the box, looking like Zalski was the closest one there for Pitt, but nothing doing again. Theory, and that one goes out off, of off of Dempsey Brown again, excuse me. And it's a chance, it's a chance to put a good ball in, get your tall plays in, see if they can get something out of this. Gotta think Zielski and Abby Oden might be the two players you're looking for. They've been kind of doing it all night for the Panthers off these set pieces. It is Zielski, and that one goes just over the crossbar. That's, that's a good effort, to be fair. That's a, that's a difficult header. You know, she's kind of going away from goal. Yeah. She's got it. You know, she's not far off there. That's a good header. Zielski, generally the tallest player in the box on a lot of those, so able to elevate and get a pretty good look there for Pitt. Brown got burst on her right. I think Wake Forest is going to try and run the clock down now. Shapansky. Looking for Fury again, but Wake Forest there to clear that one away. Still a 3-3 game between Duke and Notre Dame in Durham. In one of the other critical matchups in the ACC on this Thursday night. Stelter into the box. Abby Oden trying to give chase, but Amaral put into action and is able to clean up that opportunity. Nice little, nice little flick into there. Nice little ball in, and then just a little. It came just a little flick there. The F with a little flick in there. Again, that's just, you know. Clever header there from Fury. Very clever header, just a little bit less on it, and, and she's still on goal again. Just under three and a half to go. Mellonhorse curls and passes over to Shapansky again. Caulfield. Over to Stelzer. Stelzer off a defender. And the Demon Deacons cool, calm, and collected once again at the back. Yeah, that's the thing with it. They have been, they've not really panicked at the back too much, and they have looked calm and collective as a unit tonight. So, really good performance by them tonight. Abby Oden a shot wide again. It's a decent strike. I mean, she's got a little, little bit of power on it there. That's a, a difficult technique there, and it's, it's not far off. Panthers with a loss here would move to 9, 5, and 3 overall, 3, 4, and 2 in the ACC if this result holds. Meanwhile, Wake Forest in line to pick up their sixth win in eight attempts at ACC play. Caulfield off to Zalski.
Johnson in the middle for Wake Forest, who hasn't been in possession a ton in the last 10, 15 minutes, but they haven't needed to be. They've been clean at the back, and that's all they've needed to do in this 2-0 lead, which is a minute and 10 seconds away from turning into a 2-0 win. Yeah, they've just kind of kept the ball in front of them and not, not really looked to attack too much. They're just going to try and kill the game now. One minute to go here in Pittsburgh. Demon Deacons putting a finishing touch on yet another ACC victory. A really strong performance on the road in Pittsburgh where the weather is getting a little bit colder. It's become a much harder place to play in recent years, but the Demon Deacons up to the task. Yeah, they're going to be really happy with their last sort of six days, you know, to go into into Dallas and, and win there. One's, uh, I think, 2-1 the score there, then to come here and win 2-0. You know, now they can start focusing on, on the big game Sunday now. Headed off to Seltzer in the final 15. No one steered away again as the number two team in the country just keeps on rolling. Wake Forest unbeaten in their last seven, outscoring opponents by 13 goals, and that is why they are the second ranked team in the country. Yeah, fully professional performance, 